Oh, hi. Let's talk about secrets. Well, not those secrets. Think about application secrets. You know, the ones that you use in your code to access databases and other APIs, those secrets. If you know me, then you know that I'm all about eradicating secrets from the code base. And if you're new to this, stick around for more security and identity related content. Now, today's video is all about removing secrets from GitHub Actions using Azure Workload Identity Federation, which is a new feature out there that's going to blow your socks. So let's go. Workload Identity Federation is a new feature in Azure Active Directory that allows service principles, i.e. cloud service accounts, to access protected resources without the need to manage secrets or keys or anything else. They authenticate automatically to Azure Active Directory for you. Service principles are cloud-based service accounts that are used in many scenarios to authenticate to Azure Active Directory and then execute privileged or sensitive tasks. The problem with service principles is that we have to use either a password or a certificate to authenticate to Azure Active Directory. That turns service principles into glorified username and password objects that we have to pass around, usually with some really privileged rights to our subscriptions. And they are extremely dangerous if they fall in their own hands. We also know that we're not particularly good at managing secrets and certificates and that they often expire and we end up breaking things in production because our credentials have expired. Workload Identity Federation, which is a brand new service currently in public review, allows us to use those same service principles with these elevated permissions when we need them without the need of using a secret or a certificate. And it is amazing for improving the security stature of our infrastructure. For now, the scenarios are limited. However, as we approach GA, I expect more and more cases where workload identification will be applicable. How does it work? Surely there must be a secret somewhere. Well, still no secrets. For our example, we'll use a federate identity with a GitHub action to run a script against our Azure subscription. For that, we need to have an authenticated account. In the case of GitHub, the workload is the GitHub action, which requests a token from GitHub. GitHub issues the token. The workload now sends the GitHub token to Azure Active Directory to request an access token to access Azure. Azure Active Directory checks the configuration of the identity to ensure that it, there is a trusted relationship and validates the token. It uses the OpenID Connect issuer URL to validate this relationship and the token. If all the requirements are met, Azure Active Directory, if all the requirements are met, Azure Active Directory issues an access token to the requesting workload. The workload then uses the Azure Active Directory token to access the appropriate resources. If we are using a federated identity to deploy to Azure, then the service principle needs to have the appropriate RBAC permissions. In case you're wondering what RBAC is, it stands for Role-Based Access Control, which is a set of roles that define who and how they can access protected resources on Azure. I currently have a GitHub action that needs to authenticate to Azure Active Directory and then run a couple of Azure CLI commands. Nothing fancy. However, that still requires an authenticated account. If we were to run the job now, it would fail. Surprise, surprise. As expected, it failed because we haven't configured any credentials right now. The way we do this for GitHub Actions right now is by providing credentials for our service principle, which we haven't created yet. We're gonna do that as a next step. I'll bring up my terminal, easy ADSP create. With this command, we're going to create service principle account specifically for using with GitHub Actions. We're going to name it CM Delete because I want to delete it afterwards. We'll give it access to the whole subscription and we'll make it a contributor. This is a highly privileged service principal account. And as you will see, it comes with a few issues. First and foremost, we do have a client secret. And secondly, you'll notice that the dash dash SDK auth has been deprecated and will be removed. Perfect timing because now we can start using workload identity federation instead of hard coding service principles. We'll use this information here to create a new secret inside our GitHub action. The name of this secret will be Azure Credentials. We will paste the JSON output from the CLI command that we just run and add the secret. Now we can go back into our code. We can edit another test, commit the change, and now our action should complete successfully. Lo and behold, 
that runs successfully. Okay, this definitely works. However, that still hasn't solved the problem of having to manage secrets for those service principles. And we have to explicitly create them. How about if we use workload identification credentials to set this up instead? Let's do it. For this, we're going to switch to my Azure Active Directory tenants. So we found our service principle we just created. I'm going to make this slightly bigger so you can see. Under certificates and secrets, I'm going to leave the secret because we don't need it anymore. If we're on the task again now, our GitHub action, it is going to fail. But we're not going to let it fail, are we? We're going to add a federated credential instead. As I said, the scenarios are still limited, but we can use it with GitHub right now. So let's add this. The organization is Maxcas. My GitHub repository name, I don't remember. It's this one, this one. Then here the end type is branch. We're going to use the branch and we want to use the main. Oh my God, there's some secrets over there. You will now notice that the subject identifier reflects the edits that we did up here. The final step is to add a name, workload federated identity cred, and GitHub and add. Before we work away from here, we need two values. We need the application ID back in our GitHub action. In settings, we want to delete the old secret. Let's remove that. Yes. And let's add a new one. Azure client ID, value that we just copied. Add the secret. We need another one, which is the tenant ID. Let's grab this. That's my tenant ID. And finally, we need one more secret, our subscription ID. This information is necessary so our GitHub action knows where to direct the token that we'll get from GitHub. So it was my previous task. When we run it here, that's the output. Let's grab this beauty. One last step. We need to update the main.yaml file to make use of workload federated identity credentials. We need to add permissions. We need to update creds and add these instead, which reference the secrets that we added. This update now means that we are going to use workload identity federation credentials to sign into Azure. And you will notice that the client ID, tenant ID, and subscription IDs are not secrets. These are not sensitive information that we cannot use. And if they fall into the wrong hands, can compromise our security. And with that, we can commit. And the final test is to see our GitHub action in action. Sign in successful, and now we're running the CLI task. If you want to learn more about Workload Identity Federation, make sure to check our docs because this is where you'll find the most up-to-date information as we head to GA, which is going to be very, very soon. I hope you found this video useful. Workload Identity Federation will unlock a lot of scenarios and empower us to totally get rid of secrets and certificates when we don't really need them. And if you enjoy videos around security and identity, then make sure to like and subscribe below. And I'll see you soon.